Hello, Good. and welcome to your practices webinar series on advanced photonics packaging. I'm Ramzi Salim, your practice lead at Tyndall National Institute, where we focus on system integration and advanced photonics packaging. This webinar continues our series where we step into the world of advanced photonics packaging. So far, we've had five episodes and we've covered various topics. With me today is my co-host, Dr. Francesco Flores. Hi, everybody. Head of the training programs and um, Luca Zagaglia, who is helping develop our great coupler technology here at Tyndall. Hi, Francesco. Hi, hi Luca. Um, so five episodes. How did we get here? Yeah, well, five episodes. Uh, we started with uh, the photonics packaging rules. Quite interesting because we show the best way to um, put uh, the devices on a peak, on a photonic integrated circuit, and make it in the smartest way possible in order to be the peak, uh, let's say, automatically compatible with uh, our packaging rules, which means uh, easy and cheap. And then uh, we decided to move on. And uh, in uh, the other episode, we saw the physics behind photonic packaging. So for example, we introduced the coupling schemes, mainly edge coupling. So we show you the concept of the mode mismatch, how you can use a spot size converter and lenses in order to match the modes between fiber and waveguide. And then the second way to couple light in and out of a peak, that is the grating coupling. So we show you the basic concept, so the so-called standard grating coupler, which means uh, pitch constant. And then uh, we move further in order to increase the coupling efficiency. So we talk about the scattering strength. We increase the scattering strength by adding a polysilicon overlay on top of the grating coupler. And then uh, we introduce the concept of the apodization. Apodization is uh, you do not have uh, a single pitch anymore. You change the pitch along the longitudinal direction of the grating coupler in order to achieve impedance matching. And uh, we saw that in that case, we were able to increase the coupling efficiency from, let's say, 50 to 60 to 70, 75%. So we are getting always better and better in terms of performances. But then now the question is, uh, how can you do that? So ca can I, for example, learn a way to optimize uh, and create my own design? Well, the question, obviously, it's interesting, but it's interesting because the answer is yes. And today, Luca will show you our method, our approach that is based on the so-called PSO, so the Particle Swarm Optimization Algorithm, and uh, we implemented this inside an FTTD software. Really, really interesting. So, Luca, answer. So I can share my screen. Okay, so as Francesco already said, today I'm going to talk about our design routine that we use to optimize and design grating couplers. So the, the content of today's talk is divided into four main parts. The first part is just a quick overview on the current challenges that we have in uh, coupling the light inside a photonic integrated circuit or PIC. Then just a general introduction on the grating coupler structure and then we jump directly into the design routine. So how the particles worm optimization or PSO algorithm works and how we can implement inside the FTTD software. How can we extract the final result and build our three-dimensional grating coupler inside a 3D FTTD? How we can validate the design routine and then finally an application. So the fundamental problem that we have in coupling the light inside the peak is that there is different mismatch between the mode of the sources that we use to couple the light inside the peak and the one sustained by the waveguides inside the peak. So um, here to uh, overcome this issue, we can use a structure that is able to uh, couple quite efficiently the light and to adapt these two modes. One example can be grating couplers. As you can see, a grating coupler is a three-dimensional structure that has a plane of symmetry. 
If we consider the projection onto this plane of symmetry of the 3D structure, we get the two-dimensional cross-section. And here we can see the different layers of the SOI, so the silicon substrate, the bottom oxide layer, and the silicon grating coupler layers, and also the grating coupler structure itself with its parameters that can be the etching depth, the pitch, and these are the parameters that defines the quality of the diffraction process that couples the light inside the waveguide. And then if we consider the 2D cross-section and if we want to rotate, for example, it about the axis of rotation for a certain angle, we are able to rebuild the three-dimensional structure just using the 2D cross-section. So the 2D cross-section is the starting point of our design routine. Here you can see the core concept of the design routine. So uh, the part, how the particle swarm algorithm works and how it's implemented inside the FTTD. We use the FTTD in order to resolve the, electro the electromagnetic problem and to get the coupling efficiency. That is basically the function that we want to optimize. And the particle swarm is the algorithm that optimizes the structure. So first we want to define the parameters that we want to optimize. That can be, in this case, the pitch, the etching depth, and the height of the tox or top oxide layer. And then what we can do is to use the particle swarm to randomly choose sets of these parameters inside the parameter space. And what we have is basically general structures. These general structures are agents or are treated as agents or particles inside the parameter space by the PSO algorithm. At the beginning, what we can do is to simulate this general structure, extract the coupling efficiency for each agent, and then we have our starting position inside the parameter space. Then the particles worm start uh, the iteration process. So what it does is basically change the parameters, rebuild the general structures inside the FTTD, and get as a feedback the coupling efficiency at each iteration. And after a certain amount of iterations, what we see is that all the agents, after scanning the parameter space, collapse to the, at the best global uh, solution. And we can extract these parameters from the algorithm and rebuild the 2D cross-section. Then we can use the 2D cross-section to rebuild the 3D uh, structure and export it inside a three-dimensional external simulation. So the 3D FTTD is quite time consuming. So we want to be uh, sure that we are able to look at all the parameters that defines the diffraction process and the propagation of the light and interaction with the grating coupler. And to do that, we can use a set of monitors. For example, the exact cross-section monitor is used to look at the quality of the diffraction process. The XY cross-section is used to look at the focusing effect of the grating coupler, so the ability of focusing the light at the entrance tip of the waveguide. And the YZ cross-section <coughs> is able to uh, give information on the quality of the coupling process. So if the structure is able to couple the light inside the fundamental mode of the waveguide. And then we have other three monitors the transmittance monitors and reflectance monitors that are used to get the losses of the structure. And then of course, the coupling efficiency monitor to get the amount of light that is coupled inside the waveguide. So after we have set up this three-dimensional simulation and we have run it, we are able to validate our design routine. How? Well, in this case, we use the particle swarm to, uh, re to optimize two uh, structure known in literature in this case, we can see a uniform grating coupler with a silicon overlay on top of each tooth and an apodized grating coupler with a silicon grating coupler layer of 260 nanometers. So with the PSO, we can look at the parameters, the geometrical parameters that defines this structure, and we can compare them with the one reported uh, in the papers. But also we can use the three monitors, the two for the losses and the one for the coupling efficiency, to look at the electromagnetic spectra of our structure. And what we see is that at the working wavelength, the difference between the structure that the particles were found is just 3% respect to the measure one and reported in the paper, and 1% for the apodized grating coupler. Plus, using the losses, 
uh, we are able to see also the behavior of the interaction between the electromagnetic field and the structure. For example, what we can see is that there is a difference between the transmission, transmittance channel, sorry, of the uniform grating coupler and the transmittance of the apodized grating coupler. Why? Because in this case, we have a better impedance matching due to the fact that we have a varying pitch throughout the, the grating coupler. And basically we are filtering better or we are creating a better bandpass filter effect that is able to boost the coupling efficiency even further respect to the uniform grating coupler. Why the particles worm can be interesting? Uh, well, we can apply the particles worm to uh, optimize our structures for a different light coupling scheme. For example, the FDTD can be used to mimic the emission of a vertical fiber, plane fiber, and a micro-optical bench or MOB. So in this case, we have a laser as a source. We use a bow lens to collect the light and to reshape the laser emission in order to get a focal spot that has the same features in terms of mode field diameter of the fibers emission and the prism in order to get the right impinging angle on the top surface of the grating. So we can use the FDTD to extract is the emission of these three objects, import inside the design routine and optimize our grating couplers for these three coupling schemes. So that's it for today. I hope that the webinar were, was interesting and, and clear.